let's, let's say I want to make a, a histogram of relative frequencies. In other words, instead of um, the 18 value in L2, I'd like to express uh, the percentage um, which is in this block, the percentage of all the data. So I'm going to use L3 to, to enter these percentages, and I'm going to do it using a formula. So I'll highlight L3 first of all, because to use a formula that will fill down, you need to select the title bar. If you select within the list, the calculator will tell you error. So again, select the title bar. And now we want to take each value in L2 and divide it by the sum of L2. This is pretty easy to do. First of all, let's write down L2. We want to divide by the sum of L2. And to access the sum of L2, we need to access list, which we do by pressing second, stat, and sum is under map. So we go across the map, we come down to sum. That's pretty easy. And then, of course, we want the sum of L2, so we type L2. So now we have the relative frequencies as decimals in L3. So in other words, 9% of the data is in the first block of the graph. Now, if we want to graph this, remember that the Y scale will change. Um, I've already done this, and I'll show you the change I made. I obviously kept the 0, the 50, and the 10 from the previous graph, but because the Y values are now decimals between 0 and 1, um, I can make uh, go down here and just ensure that the Y minimum is 0 and the Y maximum is 1 depending on your highest value uh, of decimals. In L3, you could change this, but this will work fine. So if we graph this, we see uh, the relative frequency histogram. And if you trace, you'll see that you have 0.9 of the data between 0 and 1. Now, one adjustment here. Obviously, the data is crashing into the histogram, and that's pretty easy to fix. Let's go back to Window and change the Y minimum. So let's make the Y minimum negative 0.5. And what that will do is give us a little more space under the graph. So if we graph that, that's pretty neat. So notice I made the Y minimum about half uh, the distance that I have above the x-axis. And if I trace that now, it's much easier to read. So now we can see that 9% of the data was between 0 and 10. 21% of the data was between 10 and 20, and so on. And that's it.